I wonder if we can do a little uh, YouTube magic. See if we can uh, make this thing a little bigger. Yeah, that's more like it. Well, I guess the cat's out of the bag now, but uh, here's my new excavator. <laughs> It's a 2021 Takahuchi TB2150. And yeah, you can tell it's been uh, outfitted with the work brow. Got the work brow D-lock coupler, a progressive link thumb, and a 42 inch bucket. So yeah, it's uh, pretty much the same, except for the pro link thumb. That's what the 260 is. So now I got a big one and uh, mini me. Technically what I'm gonna do I guess I haven't actually purchased it yet. I'm doing like a, uh, what do they call it? ROP, rent to, rent to purchase, I guess. But my plan is for the rest of the summer and while I'm staying busy in the fall to keep making the bigger monthly rental payments, which is uh, still gonna stay at the 45, 56 a month. And then, I don't know, four or five, which I guess four or five months is like November. So <laughs> I don't know where this year has gone, but yeah, three or four months in or whatever like that, or however long and I'm staying busy and I can, I'm gonna do that. And then the idea is the remaining balance will be switched over uh, to a loan or a payment or whatever like that. And it'll be, I'm actually going through the dealer talk because I get 0% interest for, I think it's five years now. So what's that, 60 months on their excavators. They're running that at least until the third quarter i guess and who knows if they're going to change it or whatnot but their loaders are doing 48 per, or 48 months zero percent interest but their all their excavators right now are zero for 60. so that was the big the big reasoning uh, i was able to work out and get a little bit of the rental off the other machine onto this one but they were really pushing for this one just because uh it's got 76 hours i think it went out on rent just for a couple weeks before we talked about doing this deal other than that it was just sitting at their shop so uh, it does have 76 hours on it it's got a few scratches i can touch that up so i'm not really worried about that but this year you know this with this going this route i got two years of warranty or 2,000 hours and like i said it's got 76 hours and the other one had 1500 hours and no warranty on it so and the other one was going to be a I think they told me four and a half percent interest so long story short by the time i bought that one and went through that uh, i was gonna save like thirteen thousand dollars by the end going with that one versus this one so it's kind of a the zero percent interest and stuff is makes a huge huge difference uh the 2150r which is the fixed boom version it was supposed to be here towards the end of the summer now with the way things are going and everyone's behind they're talking like maybe second quarter of next year. So I don't know. I mean, part of me kind of almost wanted to wait for that. But at the same time, I know a lot of people were like, oh, I would never have a swing boom on a 36,000 pound machine. I've used it in a couple jobs where a swing boom feature was pretty handy in some of this stuff. So for what's going to work for me in my business, this setup is probably going to be ideal with the rubber pads and that swing boom feature so i don't know we'll see and i could be completely wrong but i've really enjoyed running that other one for four months and i think i'm gonna like this i like the whole i like the idea of all the work brow coupler thumb and i don't know i just like this thumb design a lot better than that psm thumb and the shape of these buckets i like it a little bit better to me than the uh i guess it's the esco bucket which this one did have it does have esco teeth they asked me which teeth i wanted on there and stuff but yeah so we'll see like i said uh excited and nervous because this is the biggest purchase I, i've ever made in my life um maybe sooner than later but i'm am planning on getting i think it's a 66 inch uh smooth or a grading bucket i think that's what they 60 or 66 inch i can't remember for sure and then uh probably either a 24 or a 30 inch uh tooth bucket the thumb is actually like almost i think it's almost 25 inches wide at the widest point so if i get a 24 inch bucket and the teeth are kicked out a little bit it should be fine but that's why i may i may just you know go to a 30 I don't want to be digging these sewer lines with a 42 inch bucket, but I can actually use that on some of it, hog it out, 
and then if I got to get a uh, trenching box I can take the 42 off drop the box in and then use the 30 to work inside the bucket so it, I mean basically this thing's just starting out it's you know clearing moving bulk materials just a lot quicker and then I'll add those other buckets like I said probably sooner than later because if I do get that or have that sewer job in July I'll probably look then at probably getting that 30 inch bucket and then I don't know I may even get the grading bucket at the same time I, everything's gonna be a lot more expensive on these so this is this is kind of a whole new deal for me everything on it's gonna be a little pricier than that one over there I really appreciate Nick from Midwest equipment he's been just fantastic to work with on this thing the whole time because uh the whole work brow deal is something a little bit different they run all work brow couplers and buckets on the like 290s and down but they don't do a whole lot of it uh on the bigger machines so normally they have a jrb coupler a psm thumb and an esco bucket so he was a little you know kind of hesitant at first because this thumb and this whole thing is about four or five hundred pounds more than the other setup because that thumb is i mean you can tell i mean work brow does not mess around what three quarters of an inch or whatever i mean it's it's a stout thumb and that coupler's i guess it's a uh what do you what do you, how do you call it like a multi pin grabber it the back of it can lengthen to it'll fit a Oh, Takahuchi, like a 138 Komatsu, uh, 135 Deer. I think it'll even fit some cat bucket. So if I mean, if I need, like in a pinch and need something, it doesn't have to just be, you know, a Takahuchi or a Komatsu bucket. It'll fit some other stuff. So, but yeah, I mean, like I said, Nick was awesome to work with, and Jonathan from Workbrow. I can't thank him enough. He knock this out of the park so they actually happen to have this coupler because this coupler will uh, fit on a 135 deer as well they already had it on the shelf uh the bucket i believe he said was part way done and then and he i don't know how he pulled it <laughs> he ended up the thumb was going to be like weeks and weeks later and he somehow managed to uh, in a couple weeks get all this together and in two days uh midwest equipment had it and they were putting it on and stuff like that so yeah big big thank you to jonathan from work brow and nick from uh midwest equipment because uh yeah i mean i'm you guys already know i'm a huge work brow fan as it was so i called jonathan as soon as i this was even going to be a possibility not just a dream and kind of told him what i wanted to do and he's the one that really kind of pushed me and talked me into like the progressive link thumb and he was He's pretty excited to get this out there. It's like the latest and greatest work brow has to offer in this class of machine. So yeah, those two guys were fantastic. Uh, I also did talk to Chris and looked at maybe trying to do the uh, LD18 bucket and thumb. But when I talked to AMI, they were like 16 weeks out. I think on the thumb, the bucket may have been a little bit quicker. And even with Chris calling and talking to him, he only got it down to like 12 or 13 weeks. So. I don't know. I mean, like I said, I would have liked to have tried that, but I have a really good working relationship with Workbrow, and they've been great to me. So, you know, and <clears throat> you guys know me. I like all my stuff to kind of look alike. So, I mean, basically, I've got a 260 and a giant 260. I mean, they're pretty much identical now with how they're set up. So, it's all Workbrow stuff. Workbrow, I mean, so. I do like that. I'm, I'm weird like that. I'm all OCD and like everything to match. I had a little more time this evening and I thought I've never actually like done, I don't know, like an overview video of one of these. You guys have seen me running a lot, but I've never really kind of like given any specifics or anything. So uh, I didn't get to use it today. I had to run the loader and the 260 a little bit, but I think I'm going to load it up and use it tomorrow. And basically the TB is track back O. Uh, the two, I believe, is the Series 2, because the original one to this is the 1140, which I believe was the Series 1, and it was a 140 size machine. So this one's a Series 2, and it's actually a 150 size machine. It weighs just a little bit over 36,000 pounds. It may actually be 36.5 or almost 37. That thumb weighs about 1,200 pounds, and then I think the bucket, there was a tag on it. I think it's 
No, that one doesn't say, but I think it was 1420 was the weight. I don't know what the... I'm not sure what the coupler weighs or whatever, but... Uh, yeah, so what do we got? 12, 26... Maybe 3,000 pounds or better <laughs> on the end of the stick, so... Uh, yeah, so anyway, I'm kind of getting sidetracked here, but... We'll just kind of go around the machine, but uh, yeah, to me, I mean, it just... The accessibility to everything is extremely nice. I mean, there's your air filter, your batteries. Yes, I've unhooked the travel alarms because <laughs> those drive me nuts. Uh, then is your, I think it's a hydraulic cooler, AC condenser, and the radiators right in there. But yeah, I mean, it's real easy to get to the air filter, the batteries. I'm guessing you probably got to take this one out and slide that one over or whatever, but it's a 24, 24 volt system in here. Which I'm sure it is on all bigger excavators. Like I said, this, you're going from a guy that runs a 13,000 pound mini to uh, <laughs> this. And it is a Deutz diesel engine. It's 114 horse, turbocharged. Uh, it does require def fluid. But yeah, then here's your oil fill, oil check, and your oil filter. And then the, uh, I think the fuel filters and all the other stuff's over here. But yeah, it sits in there sideways. I mean, like right here, you can get to the radiator to blow it out from in here. Here's your AC compressor. So that's nice. Those lines are all close and here's your pump but, i mean yeah it opens up real nice which like i said i know it's a bigger machine but you guys you know just bear with me i'm used to the small compact stuff so i'm sure they're all kind of like that but when you got this is a pilot line filter right here and then uh, the over radio or radiator overflow but, yeah i mean you can really get in here and inspect everything and uh clean it out real nice this is actually the fuel tanks behind here maybe two fuel filters sorry i haven't gone over any of this like i said it's all all together different and then there was the other travel motor that i unhooked and it's like fuses and solenoids and whatnot and then we can climb up here i think this is just a I think it's a storage compartment. I think I opened it up on the other one. Huh, look at that. It even comes with the grease gun. <laughs> I don't know if it was supposed to come with the grease gun, but uh, it came with the grease gun. It's good to know. Got me a little compartment there. Uh, this is where the def goes. Which isn't bad the only thing you got to watch is that uh a def drips out of here and so you don't it's real corrosive is what i hate about it and i haven't even had to use it that this is the only machine i've ever had that's had it uh, it's like the washer fluid yeah washer fluid and more of the pumps but i mean that's what i'm saying they just seem like everything's really easy to get to uh fuel fill this is actually where that may be the in tank filter, but I think that and the suction strainer are all up here. And then I believe you can Yeah, get to the other side of the motor here, you can check the radiator. So yeah, at least everything's uh real nice on trying to uh, get to everything. Which is good got all led lights on it already and they are bright so i don't know if i'll ever have to put like a light bar or anything on there it does have the i think they all come with the blade on there it doesn't angle which i don't know if they even make one this size that angles uh let's see i've got enough hydraulics on here to <laughs> pretty much run whatever i want i think that bigger one's for like uh a hammer and maybe like a brush or a mulching head or something but it does have i mean it's got dual auxiliary hydraulics aside from the thumb so the nice part about it is if i do end up getting like a tilt grading bucket uh should be able to just plumb it in 
I'm guessing it'd probably be the smaller line. I'm not sure. A bigger one maybe for high flow stuff, but uh, yeah, I could plumb it in to that other one right there and I would still have access or be able to use my thumb along with a tilt bucket. So that's that's pretty handy. And that's how these, just, these 2150s just come factory. I mean, that's just standard on all them is to have all the extra hydraulics and such. And you got a nice big cab. It's pretty clean. It's a little dirty for my shoes. Let's start this thing up. But yeah, I mean, I can see, you know what, some people that does kind of block a little bit of view there. It's nice because it's kind of in line with that frame or that pillar part, but I mean, you can kind of see right through here. So to me, it's kind of, you know, it's just what you can't see there, you can kind of see through here because that the other arm would be right there. But I don't know, like I said, I'm used to it because uh, all I've ever ran is mini, so. But yeah, I mean, it's got a nice spacious cab. I got the seat like all the way back and you can stretch out, touch, I think it's, well, not really touch screen, but I mean, you can, you know, the backup camera, like I said, I haven't played with it a whole lot. This is the, uh, uh, to unhook the coupler and stuff like that, which I'm not, I don't know, I'm trying to figure it out. My other one on the 260, I've got it down over here, just because there's a little more room I'm really thinking about just putting it down here and I want to get the windows. They're supposed to try to get them tinted next week, so this thing's gonna to have to find a new new spot. But then yeah, I mean they've uh radio, AC and heater controls. It does have like a crane mode, I guess, for when you're lifting stuff. And then this is uh auxiliary hydraulics and then first talk to yeah that may be the high fly I need to read up on this or whatever and then you got a uh, USB port so you can plug that in Bluetooth I think it's got an air ride seat um, eco mode or that's for like uh, higher altitudes and stuff like that and then uh, like an auto idle windshield washer lights and then to do like a manual regen or bypass it I mean, pretty much this is the uh, the nice cab. I do like it here where you can slide these windows open. So if it's cold or whatever, you don't have to have the, you know, just the door open. If the windows fog up or you're running the heater, you can just slide that or if someone walks up there to it. I just think the visibility is just fantastic for as big as this machine is. I mean, you can, you can see right over there. I'll probably, I couldn't decide. I think I'm gonna get rid of the mirror I guess it could be helpful, but I could also see it knocking it off, but I may leave those mirrors over there as that is kind of handy to be able to see down the side, but yeah, other than that, it's kind of like a giant 260, so it's, uh, it's definitely nice. But basically for those that don't know, a pro link or a progressive link thumb, the thumb will actually follow the bucket whichever you know angle and stuff yeah i don't think if you have the bucket all the way open it'll reach there because i don't i don't think there's like a breakover point yeah that's as far as it goes but you can basically see you can kind of reach out and grab stuff or like a traditional thumb would probably stop like right there and then you got to bring the bucket into it but it does make the thumb longer you just want to watch like if you've got it sticking out like that you could actually swing in there and hit those cylinders and stuff. yeah it's still kind of slow so i don't know what the deal is if like i may be able to crank it up in this on this screen here yeah the machine itself is just fantastic it's <laughs> nice and smooth everything's nice and tight but I guess that's kind of a very quick overview of uh, the new machines 
So yeah, it's definitely exciting. Uh, I'm, I can't wait to get out there and get to running it and stuff. So we'll do a little bit with it tomorrow and then uh, probably next week, I got a couple days where I'll just be in this thing all day long. So we'll definitely get some good footage of actually doing something with it instead of just talking about it in the parking lot. But yeah, here's, uh, <laughs> here's the new machines. Uh, you're gonna see a few videos with the other machines. I'm kind of just throwing this one up ahead of everything else because I let the cat out of the bag last night on Instagram, so I figured I better put something up on YouTube pretty quick to uh, show everybody on there. But uh, yeah, this is it. Like I said, next week, hopefully, I think he said Wednesday, Thursday, I'll get the windows tinted. So that's going to make a huge difference. And it's going to look a lot better and be a lot cooler inside there. Like I said, if I left anything out, if you guys got questions on about it, it's been a long day, so I don't remember if I do even... <laughs> I think I hit all the high points, but if not, just uh, let me know and I'll get them answered. But yeah, be looking forward to uh, seeing this machine in a lot more upcoming jobs and videos. So, all right, thank you guys. I'll just catch you later.